My name's Anushka and I'm from Magical Bridge and today we're going to be reading The Sneeches and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. So let's start with The Sneeches. Now the star-bellied Sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain belly Sneeches had none upon theirs. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star-bellied Sneeches would brag, we're the best kind of Sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star-bellied children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon theirs. When the star-bellied Sneeches had Frankfurt or roasts, or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly Sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near. And that's how they were treated year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly Sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches. Just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I'm the fix it up chappy. I've come here to help you, I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star-bellied Sneech? My friends, you can have them for $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, then the big machine roared and it clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burked and it bopped them about, but the thing really worked. When the plain belly Sneechers popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties, and now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know, they all frowned, if which kind is what, or the other way round? Then up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who, that's perfectly true. But come with me, friends, do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on beaches, and all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like Sneeches who have them on theirs. And that handy machine working very precisely removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then, with snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks, and they let out a shout. We know who's who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. 
Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things really got into a horrible mess. All the rest of that day, on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches, off again, on again, in again, out again. Through the machines, they raced round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They will never learn. Nope, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the sneeches really got quite smart on that day. The day they decided that sneeches are sneeches and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day, all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. Thank you so much for reading The Sneeches and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss with me. Bye!